And now let's start making a bridge in Houdini with some basic procedural modeling. So in Houdini itself, we're going to start out by creating a geometry network since we want to create some geometry. And in here, we're going to use a line, and this is the guide of my bridge. So we're going to make sure it's uh, faced in the X axis, and we're going to add a length and also adding points here. Now, special here is we want to calculate the distance and we want to control the bridge by a ramp value. So we're going to say start calculate from zero and use the mask with maximum distance to use the ramp along the line. So maximum distance is along the whole line. So now I have a ramp controlling uh, a value here. So we can see the, the red color controlling that. So I can use that here now in a bit of wrangle. So we can say at the position of my points dot y, so the height is equal to that mask value I just created from here. So here I have a mask and a point. So we are just adding up those two values. So I have uh, that result. So now let's, let's then use a sweep node. And in the sweep node, I'm gonna set it to a ribbon. So it's just one line. And we're gonna also make sure the orientation or the rotation is into the Y axis, which is facing up here. So now we can set up some better values and we reduce the amount and make this a bit longer. So maybe even go into like a value of two. So this is like the part I would walk on of my bridge. So these are uh, my planks. And then I'm going to copy this and these are then my border. So to make a border, I'm going to actually make one change here. I'm going to set the type to one of the columns. So now I've created these side lines to work with. So from these lines, I'm going to just copy the plank sweep we did you made. And we just now have actually geometry on those lines. So this is the border thickness. So we can choose how thick the borders are. So of course we need to reduce the amount here to make them a bit more thinner. And then we're gonna uh, want to split them into individual primitives. So now uh, these primitives are now separated. So if I place an extrude node and start to extruding here, so extrude and give this some uh, value to work with, we can see that they are now sort of like separated from each other and not merged into one piece. And we also want to make sure we have like a bottom geometry here. So now to make this bit look better, let's do a bevel and the bevel will make this uh, like you will see that they are more separated from each other. So you can see the individual stones better, but probably you want to have less or more of them. So we want to have some control and that is where a resample comes in useful. So resample controls the amount of points on a line. So if I reduce the amount or the spacing between, we will now uh, have bigger chunks or bigger stones here. So we are just basically placing lesser lines or reducing the length between each point. So now we can take a quick look and merge our results to see what we have. So I have a basic bridge shape here. Now to make this a bit better, we can do a transform node and we can maybe move this bit downwards so that fits a bit better. And we can also make the planks visually a bit more interesting. So we can actually copy paste the system here where I did the extrusion and the bevel. And we will now actually make this into real planks. So now they are actually geometry stuff that's just a plane. We probably want to lower the extrusion since we want to have small planks. And then we have something like this, just some basic planks. So this is then the base shapes of my bridge. And we can quickly also make this better by adding some colors. So we can use a gradient color, which is just, again, gradient based on position. And this is a labs node. So make sure you install side effects labs. So in the gradient color, Let's fill in some nice colors so we can go with something a bit more brownish. And then for the other color, let's also do some brownish, but maybe a little bit of a tint of red in there. So we have some nice color variation here. So that looks uh, way better. And then we can repeat the process for the border as well, where we just place the uh, gradient node. And then again, uh, this goes from a dark to a light value, so maybe uh, make this a bit darker overall since these are stones so we can make this a bit darker and then we can have something like this so that's already looking pretty nice and already could be usable in a game even 
uh, but let's make a side border or railing for people to hold on. So we're going to go back to the resample and I'm going to use an extrusion. And I'm going to extrude the line here. So there are a couple ways of doing that. So we can play around with the basic extrusion values, but that might not always be an option. And then I often like to use this setting here to transform this. So you will have this special handle for extrusion in a specific direction. I also often prefer to set this to global uh, instead than a uh, good extrusion. So now we just use a poly wire and we will already have our result. So poly wire will just add polygons around the wireframe. So as you can see, we just made the wireframe into geometry. And that's basically how I can quickly make a railing here. So we can also give it the color. Maybe it should be a bit darker to have some color variation. So just gonna pick out the color here and make that a bit darker. So that's looking uh, good now. So we are almost done. Now, the cool thing here with the setup is that it's already been a bit procedural. So if I go back to the ramping value, I can play around with my ramp. If I disable here also that masking color, we can play around with the ramp now to make a more uh, specific bridge shape or like funny bridge shape if I need something a bit more fun funky, like you see here. So again, we are having a quite procedural approach even though I just started to model like a basic shape from, from a bitch. So let's bring back that normal shape again that I had. And let's talk about like supporting weights uh, for in the height. So we're going to grab here one of the border shapes. And this is then my support area. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to lower the width here. So the support bars are a bit more inside of the bridge. Then I'm going to resample this again. So again with the resample we can control the spacing of the points. So if I increase this we will have less points and more spacing. So I don't want that many support pieces. So I'm going to keep it to a higher value. So there are not that many points. Now secondly I want to also then make a model to then copy on the shapes later. So I'm going to place a box and in that box, I'm going to change the height and the size. So let's bring this to like a 0.4 and a 0.4 value. So it's a 1 in the height and 0.4 in the X and Z. Then we can also do a small bevel. Because making a bevel will make it look better. And we can also now uh, change uh, the pivot points. So now it's perfectly in the middle of that geometry. But I can use the match size node to change the pivot uh, procedurally. So we have this menu that automatically set the pivot to a certain position. So if I set the pivot here to maximum, it will always set that to that location. Even though if I would change the shape, it would always match up to that maximum distance. So now I can copy the box on the point so we can fill in our geometry. And then we can also fill in here our curve. And as you can see, that already works fine. So we are copying these uh, boxes or the support pieces on that curve. So now we just also give it a color to fit with the other pieces. So give it some darker value. Maybe a little bit color. And we merge that. So we have this result. So that's already looking pretty good. Uh, but if you want to sort of like fix the issue where they are too long, uh, we could, for example, just place a clip note. So this is pretty rough done and it works but if you want to have something a bit more specific you can also do that. So this is basically my result that I have for a procedural bridge setup. So this is a base setup that I created here and we could for example make this a bit better by again using the mask value and we can use the mask in a scale. So if I place a wrangle here and if I would say at my P scale or uniform scale is equal to my masking value. So now a little magic happens and we'll see that our uh, boxes are automatically scaled with that value. So I actually don't need that clipping anymore uh, since we are actually just scaling them by default. So that's like a small trick or improvement you could make. And there are a couple of these you could do along the way. 
You could also, for example, uh, make it the border interesting by adding some variation. And the chain node is really useful for this. So here we have the chain node, and it will just copy boxes on a curve. So here I have a small box and a long box, and I'm just inputting that into the chain node, and it will instantly give me this result uh, where I have these boxes in a uh, more variation. So I'm going to grab it from the resample, and then I have this result. So there are some videos about it, how to use the chain node, which is very useful. Uh, but again, like this is a very basic setup of a procedural bridge. So I want to share you some basic setups and ideas of modeling with Houdini. And I want you to take this to then to the next level. So if you want to learn this, or if you're interested in learning more about Houdini, start playing around with values and different fa parameters and try to explore what different nodes are doing. And also make this into like a procedural tool. So you can wrap this up into a digital asset. Uh, you can improve this bridge more. You can add some, for example, uh, lanterns, or you can add a uh, like uh, overgrowth. So you can add more different things and explore more about what this is doing. So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I probably want to make a few more of these basic modeling videos with Houdini. Uh, let me know what you think. Please like, subscribe. Thank you.